In today's video, we're going to be look at, looking at how to calculate enthalpy changes in an experimental way. So this is the experiment we're going to be using. It is carried out using a calorimeter, and it basically is used to calculate the temperature change. So this is the apparatus. As you can see, there's a polystyrene cup, which is a good heat insulator and reduces heat loss to surroundings. And then the expanded polystyrene cup also absorbs very little heat itself, so there's no need to calculate the heat absorbed by the calorimeter. The other apparatus would be a stirrer to mix the two reactants, and then a thermometer to calculate temperature. So once the minimum and maximum temperatures of the reaction mixture are known, the enthalpy change can then be calculated. So this is the equation we're going to be looking at first. Q equals mc delta t. So that means the heat absorbed in joules is equal to the mass of solution in grams and then times specific heat capacity times the change in temperature. So what is specific heat capacity? It is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of substance by one degree Celsius or one Kelvin. So as you can see, the units are either joules per gram per Kelvin or joules per gram per Celsius degrees. So now let's look after we find Q, then we can try and find the enthalpy change. So then the other equation we'll be looking at is change in H is equal to negative Q divided by moles in reaction. And the moles in reaction is calculated by finding the limiting reaction mole, reactant moles. So whichever re reactant has the least amount of moles, that will be the number of moles you use in this equation to find delta H. So let's look at a worked example to see how exactly we can calculate the enthalpy change. So in this example, the equation we're looking at is zinc plus copper sulfate gives us zinc sulfate plus copper. So the information we're given is that the volume of 0.5 mole per dm cubed of copper sulfate used is 50 cm cubed. Then we look at the mass of zinc powder, which are given, which is 3 grams. The initial temperature 21 degrees Celsius and the max temperature 43.5 degrees Celsius. So the initial and max temperature are calculated using this calorimeter I mentioned above. So the first step is going to be to calculate what Q is. So we're going to plug in our values. Q equals MC delta T. So M is going to be 50 grams. So why don't we use 3 grams here? It's because we're looking at the mass of the solution. That's why we're using the 50. Then we assume the specific heat capacity of water, which is 4.18 joules per grams per Celsius, degree Celsius. And then also we're assuming that the density of solution is of the solution is one gram per cm cubed. Therefore, 50 cm cubed of solution has the mass 50 grams. And then for the temperature, we have 43.5 minus 21 degrees Celsius. So therefore, we have 50 times 4.18 times 22.5 joules, which gives us 4702.5 joules. And then we divide that by 1,000 to get 4.7025 kilojoules because this is what we'll need for our delta H reaction. Our second step is going to be to calculate the limiting moles. So first, for the moles in copper sulfate, we have 0 0.5, which is the concentration, and we times that by 50, divided by 1,000 because we need to change 50 cm cubed into dm cubed. Therefore, the number of moles we get is 0 0.025 moles. This is just using the moles concentration equation we know over here, where number of moles is equal to concentration times volume. For the moles in zinc, we're using the formula mass divided by atomic mass. So 3 grams divided by 65.37 gives us 0 0.0459 moles. So as we can see, the copper sulfate moles is smaller, so it's the limiting reactant. So now our third step is going to be to calculate, to put the two steps together and calculate enthalpy change. So the react reaction equation, as I mentioned, is delta H equals negative Q over moles. So negative 4.0725 kilojoules divided by <clears throat> 0 0.025 moles. And that will give us negative 1.88 times 10 to the power of 2 kilojoules per mole. And that is our enthalpy change. So some assumptions which are made in this reaction is that there is no heat loss from the polystyrene cup. Although it is a very good insulator of heat, some heat will be lost to the surroundings and it could be reduced 
by carrying out the reaction in a vacuum flask, for example. And the other assumption made is that the specific heat capacity and the density of the reaction mixture are equal to those of water. A more react accurate method would be to use the actual density and specific heat capacity of the solution. However, in this case, we use the we just use water specific heat capacity and assume one gram per cm cubed for the density of water. So that is how to calculate enthalpy change in an experimental way. So it is very important that you remember these two formulas and the steps to calculate it. Thank you.